ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to be here with you today in the historic city of New Delhi and this warm, welcoming venue. It's indeed an honor to be among such group of individuals who are leading the drive of sustainable development and shaping the way forward in addressing global climate change. At the, at the outset, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to, who, to all who have worked to organize this important event on sustainable development. In particular, I would like to thank Dr. B. Pachori, the Director General of the Energy Resource Institute. We were honored to have Dr. Pachori speak in Doha just a few years ago, and I greatly appreciate his invitation to attend this summit. We are gathering here today because we share a common concern about the impact of the unsustainable use of our resource on climate change. Equally is unimportant. We have come together because we share a common responsibility to the well-being of a future generation. To address this concerns on a national level, the government of Qatar, under the wise leadership of His Highness the Emir of, the, of Qatar, has approved and adopted in 2011 an ambitious long-term strategy for the sustainable development of the country. The leadership in Qatar is committed to work diligently with other governments in building a global consensus around sustainable development goals and climate change policies. The global economy is, go is going through unprecedented economic growth. Although the economic growth has lifted millions from poverty, however, the current model coupled with rapid population growth in certain regions of the world has resulted in growing pressures on the limited resource on Earth. There, there are no better words to characterize these uh, grave issues other than the wise words of the great Indian leader, Mahamata Gandhi, who said, Earth has enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. Indeed, Earth has enough resources to, satis to satisfy the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. But we must be broadened in how we use these resources. We must come together to make fundamental changes in how we produce and how we consume. As we meet the needs of our societies, if our societies continue on a path of greed, the growing pressures in our limited resource will lead to a, a widening divide between, divided between the rich and poor and cause irreparable damages to the environment. It is therefore incumbent, open to, you, to us, to work together to reserve this destructive course. We need to work collectively to eliminate or at least to mitigate the harmful outcomes of the unsustainable practices in the production and the consumption of goods and services. Fortunately, this summit has brought together some of the greatest minds and committed leaders from cross economic sectors, scientific institution, and civil society. 
in an effect in, in, in effort to facilitate the exchange of knowledge and thoughts on this in this in these press, uh, pressing issues so let us take advantage of this opportunity and work together to develop policies that will make a difference. Let us commit here to move forward, building our work on the principles and policies of previous agreements, such as the Johannesburg Declaration on Sustainable Development. And and, and the 10-year framework of program of sustainable production and consumption adopted at Rio Plus 20 conference. It's time that we transition from our, our global consensus on, on moral positions on issues of climate change and sustainable development to solutions that are more practical. Uh, as the former president of the Doha Cup 18 CMP8, I'm quite aware of the serious challenges lying ahead as we work to search a consensus on uh, in corporate visions to address this climate change. This consensus will require that we work hard to narrow the gap that exists between the public and corporate visions. I be, try to be a more clear and a more, you know, to speak to you from the heart to the heart. My experience as president of COP18 in Qatar, it gave me a lot of confused. I'm a man who came from the energy sector. I worked all my career more than 40 years in the energy sectors. I was, as Qatar, we are small oil producer, we are, but we are a big gas producers. And this is our challenge, how to, you know, to, to relate, you know, uh, environmental and, you know, hydrocarbon productions. I was you know, in the, in the eight, cup 18, as president, I tried, and I thought, all this gathering, 192 countries, more than 15,000 people, participants of all over the world, come to Doha for two weeks. We work a night and a day, almost 20, uh, 22 hours a day, to try to bring the world for an agreement. Then, I, I was saying to myself, now I find out, yes, the address is a climate change conference, but when I go deep, there is no climate change. It's only a politics and interest. And this is why, you know, it's turned all these cups to a politician's arena. And we, we don't understand how the big players they are not part of the agreement. And then we find out that big, you know, the most big players in the world, the biggest producer of emission, they are not part of the agreement. So we tried, in the end of the day, in the end after two, uh, two weeks of, of the conference, to how to just to introduce to the world what they call it a text. And then we say, okay, we will see you in Warsaw. Then we will see you in Lima. Then next, this year we will see you in Paris. And I hope that the world should understand that the climate change is effective. And it's effective in consumption, production. It will affect in all over you know, the region. I hope that that the politicians should understand this is another way of protecting also the end. I understand, because when I was discussed with one of the big country who are not part, I say, you should sacrifice 
He told me, don't give me a gun and ask me to shoot my leg. Is my interest, my country interest. So I hope that all this discussion, I hope that the whole, because I know there is a big difference between academic, scientific, and politicians. Politicians can't speak long hours. At the end of the day, you will not understand what he tried to say. And the scientific, he wants a solution now, not tomorrow. And also, this is not a pragmatic. So how we can bring pragmatic and dreams? Because it will take years, because you cannot stop sustainable development. And in the same time, especially in the developed countries. In 2002-06, I have another experience. I was elected as president of the Sustainable Development Conference in the United Nations. I spent days, weeks in New York, in the United Nations, to deal with governmental, non-governmental, uh, and in the end of the day, we try and we still we have a dream. Thank you very much, Your Excellency.